video today we're going to look at Framer Motion UI Library. I think that's what it's called. So for those who don't know, Framer is a design tool like a Figma or Sketch, one of those things great for prototyping designs and, and layouts and making things, uh, making web layouts and animations and things like that. Um, but in particular, the, the software enables you to do uh, transitions and animations and that's a really helpful thing for designers to be able to rather than just going then the page goes up or spins or whatever they can very precisely use Framer to build animations and, and precise type of things and then hand those over to a developer with a clear demonstration of exactly what those values are and how they should work so Framer seems to have this motion library which enables you to literally take the values the designer gives you about the, the speed of animations, the style, how much these properties should change and enable you to quite easily plug those animations into your actual code, providing a really valuable interface between the designers and the developers. As so we see here this example that's got an animation UI, someone can sit and play with the values showing you if you select something, how and where, in which way it should transition and move and then it will give you the code for it. They've also got this super cool website that lets you kind of sit and play with all their little versions and understand it does all kinds of uh, cool styles and, and different animations and controls. So how it mainly works, it's a React library, so it's very specific to React, but um, if you're using it, it's very valuable. You would create a, an element called a motion div instead of just a regular div, and that way it knows that you can inherit these properties. So you can give it an object like animate, and then you can give it these very specific values and it will know how to move versus CSS properties basically. Anything's animatable you can give it this little object of values and it will know it needs to animate those and obviously you can then update those and it will automatically know to do some sort of transition and animation which is really valuable. This is a lot like CSS in JS in that now having the JavaScript side means you can pull really useful values such as uh, page dimensions or uh, data based values and you can now put these directly into the element stylings to say you should render in this way or go at this speed or change a thing you can dynamically change styles but it has an interesting difference that that makes it better than just any old css in js library in this demonstration on their website they show a bunch of information cards and then when you click one it moves into the center becomes an overlay and then has this close and additional values you see those buttons along the bottom they hide again when you deselect something this touches on something which feels like it should be easy but is completely impossible in web development currently is if you have elements in one type of layout say these are uh, relatively positioned or maybe part of a, a CSS grid flexbox type solution they have a very uh, fixed way in which they're displayed on the page and certain rules about how they they should appear and which uh, position and which layout dimensions if you then want to transition something you might say like, well, why do we need a big CSS in JS library? What I want is I'll create an active class and when you click on it, it becomes active. And active means it will become a fixed position and we'll use percentages to set where it displays on the page and then we'll add extra settings. That basically can't be done. You can't animate something from a relative to fixed position. It just, it, you're basically telling it to recalculate its layout completely. When you click it, it will just jump into a place. Here, what you're doing is, is um, using the animate shared layout component you map over your items and then underneath here you just set a style for what the the acted uh, the selected element is so basically when you click at this point it just knows that it's going to now become a different type of element you click it then then creates the transition for you because it knows like oh you want the middle the the active one to be in the middle and this one here i know you've got two components and it's basically going to turn from one of these components into one of these components but I'm going to very smoothly make the element just move into place and take care of all the positioning for you and it makes it a lot easier for you to plug something in and use it you know have to work out calculations it reminds me of uh, Sarah Drasner a while back had done a, a demo about a website here it is that's um, had like page transitions so you could click like home and this would jump and then you click here and they would go into a list and then you click a different person and jump the elements would move and jump around the page based on the actual route you're on which is lovely and you might be able to do it within a view app like this um, by by using certain plugins or toolings it's one of the most requested features now we're getting component queries is, is people talk about would be lovely to do transitions and animation between pages and it can currently be done but by a lot of javascript and kind of fanacity type things 
this uh, example is, is really lovely, but it kind of feels like you've got to have that in mind from the beginning. You can't later on go like, let's turn this into transitions because you're going to have to work very precisely about what their positions are and how you pass those values and do these things. This frame of UI example absolutely could be bolted in at a later point. If you've got a bunch of lists and then wait at the moment when you click on one, it just takes you to a page. You absolutely could go back and just turn them into motion components and it would work in this way. This is one of their examples, which is a bit more fully featured. So you've got uh, a series of articles and when you click on one, not only is it changing the route, but it's popping that image into place. A lot like a, a, a native app type feel where the cards are gonna pop and transition you look at the the code for it, you've got um, your data here, they just map uh, over those and provide a card component. And then that list is just passed into a router to tell you like, here's, here's your list and, and match on this uh, path. So this will just know enough within the library that like an active one takes this state, a non-active takes this state, and it's kind of doing a lot of the lifting for you. Someone might sort of say like, this is still, um, JavaScript controlling layouts and I'd rather that CSS did the styles and JavaScript is for the information and the functionality and this is kind of blurring the line between those two. The thing is with this example exactly you've got two uh, types of component this one is just displaying a little bit of information but when you click it you're then getting this divider and then these buttons underneath and then this close button. They've basically got two different states. The way you would do this if it was a pure CSS solution even if you could do your own animation is you'd have to wrap everything in loads of if statements. So if you're in an active state, show these buttons. If you're in an active state, show this divider. If you're in an active state, show this close button. The whole component would start to look quite messy because you've got everything wrapped in like, at what point should you show this or this or this or this. With this layout instead, you're just sort of saying like, this is what an active component looks like. This is what a regular component looks like. And you're just saying to the library, you handle a thing that makes it look like they're part of the same thing and they transition smoothly. We're just, I'm just gonna control different states of things. I think it means your code can be quite clean, can be quite readable, and you're not having to kind of get into the weeds I'm dealing with. Even like Greensock, which is a fantastic library, you're still kind of right there in the animation sort of specifying on these values and it's gonna go to here and this is my timeline and frame. With this, it feels like you could probably rely a lot on the defaults to say like, here are some values, I wanna make this thing happen and it's useful. worth considering you know a few drawbacks obviously this is a big library you're adding more JavaScript in it's currently for react so you're limited by what library you use for this if you if you specifically see this and say like I want to make this thing then that's also means you're gonna have to do it in react you're gonna have to do these so it's it's uh, quite prescriptive about how you use it currently also it's, it's a library so you're adding more JavaScript to your app than you need to how important are these transitions if it really is like there's two places in the whole application that you just want to make something jump or flick, you're definitely better off just trying to build a standard CSS animation. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, things like uh, Greensock can do fantastic things. If you want to do like, scroll-based animations, SVG animations, all kind of clever stuff. So it's not for everything, but there's certainly something here. That, that scenario of uh, root-based animations and that ability to pick something from a list and, and put it in an active state, just incredibly hard to do if you're doing it by hand. And leaning into a library, this is one of the cases where I'd say like, yeah, just, just take that stress off my hands and do this. Um, so a big thumbs up so far my my uh, limited usage of uh, frame of motion UI. And have not actually used the frame at all, but I imagine that workflow, if a designer was able to hand me something on a tool and tell me like, I've got all the values, I know how to easily just plug in and build this, really seamless. And it's a lot better than those tools that say, no code, we just build it and publish it straight away. Those are always a bit kind of suspicious. Whereas I think something just says, we give you all the tools and all the values you need is a really nice uh, mid-step at the moment. Would really love to hear any feedback if you've used it or if you have any good or negative thoughts about this library and using it, uh, please let me know. But um, that's all for now. Thanks a lot.